Have you ever checked a model website, looked at the SRH and said, man, this is amazing. And then you go out and you see a storm and it's not amazing. Maybe it's not as organized as you thought. Maybe it doesn't look like there's a lot of shear. Why is that? Well, it may have to do with the storm motion and maybe, just maybe, you were lied to on that model website. We're gonna talk about all that and how that might just come to pass right after this. When you look at a model website and you click on to a sounding, that area in the top right is where we're gonna be talking a lot today. That's called the hodograph. You wanna know more about hodographs? That card that just popped up is going to get you there and, well, quite honestly, a lot further along because Cameron Nixon is part of that series and uh, he takes us to school. But with that said, let's take a look at the thing that I wanna talk about today and that's the storm motion vectors on there. There's usually three squares on these soundings, right? There's one that's usually up toward the top and it's an LM, that's the left mover. There's usually a brown one in the middle somewhere. That's the mean wind motion. And then you have that beautiful box that connects everything to the squiggly lines of the hodograph that we look for for SRH and that's the right mover, the right motion. So what we're gonna talk about today is how models are not going to get storm motion exactly right. And in the real world, they may not move as right as they should be, should be uh, initially, and they may not ever get there. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about how that affects storms, how that might affect your tornado potential, and when you can kind of anticipate this. We're gonna talk about all that. Let's get going. Now, of course, you have probably looked at a model sounding and you've seen all these motions. And of course, you probably, at this point, this is more a more advanced video, you know a little bit about left movers and right movers, right? So a left mover typically is going to be anti-cyclonic. It's gonna be one of those left split supercells that are coming, screaming north away from the right split, the cyclonic supercell that you're looking for for tornadoes, right? That right mover is gonna be the tornado one and the left mover is gonna possibly have huge hail. And it's also gonna wreck everything north of it. Not that I'm bitter about a previous chase with that. Not, not that I am, no, no. So, but we are gonna look at how these are just estimates. That's the big thing. These are just estimates. These are not definitely where storms are going to move. You cannot set your clock to these. The science of storm motion is very complex and quite honestly, it's not settled either. But let's take a look very briefly at a little bit of why a storm and especially why a supercell turns right. And a supercell moves right because of pressure differences around the supercell. There's a couple of schools of thought on how this is. We're not gonna get bogged down in the science on this video, but typically, uh, when you look at storms, they're propagating, right? They're, they're oftentimes propagating. That means one side's dying, the other side's growing, and they're just kind of moving along like that. And these storms love to propagate toward low pressure, which is usually located on the south or right side of a storm, a supercell storm in this instance. And this area of low pressure will bring that propagation toward it because these storms love propagating to that low pressure because that's where it all, the, all that magic happens. And so when this happens, these storms will tend to turn right. And now, depending on how far right it is, is a whole set of circumstances. And there's a lot of uh, different views of thought about how all this happens, very complex. But I think the thing that you need to keep in mind is that storms, especially supercells, are going to turn right, and they might be uh, a little more right or a little less right than that, that right moving vector on soundings. And one more thing to talk about there is that how storms move is probably situational. I'm a big believer in a situational theory about storms. And with that said, that, 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 what I mean by that is that I think that every environment is unique and the things driving like why this storm produces a tornado versus why this storm didn't, but this storm also produced a tornado and these two that did don't really match up. I think it's situational. I think there are a variety of factors that cause storms to turn right or produce tornadoes. And I think that because of that, no two situations are the same, which is why this is always gonna be, well, it's gonna be pretty hard. One more note on a right mover though, that I think th the practical way to look at this is if you are in an environment that supports supercells and you are in an environment that can produce tornadoes, that supports at least that possibility, when you see a supercell turn right, 
it's time. Like when that supercell turns right, that thing is ready to rock and roll. That I've seen so many supercells turn right then produce tornadoes. It's almost like part of the formula. It's not quite, but it feels like a very big part of the formula. It's something you look for. And I'm telling you when those supercells turn right, you, you be, it's time, be ready. Mid video reminder, well, hit that subscribe button. There's a lot to learn. We're about to get into some cool stuff. Let's get moving, let's go. Okay, so let's talk about how these changes in motion can affect storms and can affect the SRH. Oftentimes when a storm first forms, it's not turning right because it's not there yet. Those pressure differences aren't there. The storm isn't quite ready to make moves, that sort of thing. So it's not ready to turn right. So it's gonna be moving closer to the mean wind versus that right moving vector you saw on Sharpie soundings, right? So with that in mind, when you do that, when you adjust that storm, that storm motion vector a little bit close to that mean wind, you'll notice that the storm relative velocity is a lot lower. So the environment that storms initially form in is oftentimes drier and less sheared uh, in the sense of holicity than you would otherwise think. And because of that, these early, the early versions of storms, they sometimes look like this. They don't, they're not really looking the part. It's when you get later in the day, as you move forward in time, sometimes storms form and they immediately go to tornadoes. That's because of boundaries, could be because of extreme instability causing those pressure differences really quickly and all that stuff so the storm wants to turn right in tornado. But not most days, most days, uh, storms are gonna take a little bit of time, right? They're, they're gonna take a little bit more time to get going and producing tornadoes. So when they're first up and they're not making that big right turn, they're not really maximizing their environment. When you do see that right turn, you can see what happens here and you move toward that right vector. Isn't that amazing? It does, you have big things happen. What's gonna happen with storms when they turn right? Two things are gonna be true at once. They're gonna turn right more southerly, most usually, or easterly, southerly or easterly, and they're also going to slow down. And because of that, your, your vote vector from your mean wind to your right movers, almost always to the bottom and left, right? And because of that, you just increase that SRH, you increase the vorticity going into these storms. And a couple of things can happen. You can get amazing structure develop when these storms turn right because you're getting a lot more storm relative helicity or, or, well, yeah, it could be tornado time as well when those right turns happen. The thing I always like telling people is we don't need to make helicity that complex. The more there is, well, the more favorable things are for supercells and tornadoes. It really is kind of that simple. Uh, of course, as with all things in weather, we could do a whole like 60, 120 minute presentation on storm relative holicity, how all that interacts with storms. And maybe just maybe we'll do a live class at some point and really dive in deep on that. But just know that when storms slow down and turn to the right, that rule where more holicity is usually a pretty good thing, uh, you're going to get more holicity. You're gonna get more of that spin into the updrafts, more of that vorticity, and that's going to lead to storms doing very big things. So to review, the things that you wanna take away from this are very simple in my opinion. One is that storms are not, these storm motion vectors on these soundings also being estimated by models are just guesses. They're not going to be fully right. I've seen storms move well to the right of the right moving vector. I've also seen them move well to the left. And I think this is probably going, this probably helps us explain sometimes why some storms in big environments don't produce and some do. And I think it's always, I think it has to do with how storms maximize their environment. So with all that said, I think that's one big takeaway. So those are guesstimates. And the other one is, is that you're looking for those right turns for storms to really do those big things. Big time structure shows, big time tornadoes are all associated with right turns. So look for those. And when you see a storm turn right, you can bet it's taking the most uh, out of its environment and making the most of that. And it's gonna, it's about to do the best it can that day for uh, what, what the environment is, which, hey, well, that's what we're looking for as storm chasers, right? So hey, be sure to subscribe. If you like this video and you wanna see more, uh, along these lines, you wanna learn more about how storm motion affects storm relative helicity. Well, hey, that's a subscribe, right? Subscribe, enable notifications, like this video, and, and be sure to remember this too, weather's for everybody. 
I hate if you if this confuses you and you need to go to the basics, weather's still for you, storm chasing's for you, storm spotting's for you, all of it's for you. Because storm chasing is for everybody, weather is for everybody. So, well, study up, look for those right turns, and we'll see you next time. And when you see this in action on a day or two, it might really make sense. So with that in mind, oh no. Let's go, let's turn it off. Oh no, oh no, I'm making more noise. That's so bad. I gotta turn it off, there we go. Okay, let's try that again.